Lou, we've been trying to do this for years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. finally. It's good to see you, sir. Doc, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm very lucky, man. I'm here on, on God's time, you know. I've been, you can look at the, the length of my career. Started at the age of 17 in 1953. Now, I have a photograph of me and my great-grandmama, who's from down here. Mm -hmm. She had to be approximately, in that photograph, 110. Wow. So it's, uh, she was a slave, so we don't know, I say approximately, because the Bible didn't get started until after the slaves were freed, and her birth was not recorded in the Bible, and she remembers the Bible being started. So when, the next time I'll show you these photographs. So now I've been doing this since 1953, and this is what year it is now. I'm on Barra's time. I'm on just the longest career that you can think of. Now see, it's interesting listening to you. So I just saw Emancipation. Yes, sir. Yes. Starring Will Smith. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing when we have these conversations with people and they say, oh, um, slavery was just so long ago. And so for you to say, no, my great-grandmother was a slave. Yes. It's, and I think it's now to our benefit. Because when you travel, like Glenn is starting to travel now and others will, we get to see the, the condition of other countries, other oceans, other cultures. And if we believe in God, and a lot of us do, he's telling us if you don't get rid of that stuff that makes somebody superior or inferior and work together for their mutual salvation, everybody's gone. So I walk around talking to the kids with my foundation, which is that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, as an elder, let's call for what it's worth. I don't get into anybody's face, but the truth is the truth. We are desperately needed at our best for the salvation of mankind. I want to talk about that. Just you know, obviously, we really want to go in detail about roots. What but it, 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 I did a video the other after I saw Emancipation, and it absolutely bothers me. When I hear people say, look, man, I'm sick of these slavery movies. We're more than that. I, I, that that's, that's pain. That's, that's, that's black trauma. And, and my deal is uh, Jewish folks make it perfectly clear. Oh, of course. Never forget. No, never forget. And, 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 and I say, mm -hmm. I don't care what you say. When I see many of these films, I'm seeing resilience. I'm seeing uh, a fight. I'm saying never broken. It's and no so, such thing as impossible. And so for me, it's not, it's not trauma. It's called history. Yes, it is. Yeah. Now, there's a, there's a trick in it, though. And the trick is if you hold on to that resentment, we're the ones that get the cancer. We're the ones that get the high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So we need to take it and put it aside as we go ahead for the benefit of us all. We just have one of the oldest cultures that's desperately needed for mutual salvation. Mm -hmm. That's the consciousness for us to behave as if we have the keys in our roots to save mankind right. and be a major con contribution to our mutual salvation. That puts us where we belong. I gave a uh, commencement speech to Gramblin. Yes, sir. And the title of the speech was, Never Say Toby. <laughs> Tony, yeah. And, and so when I, when, I, when I gave the commencement speech, and I, when I worked in newspapers, oh, yeah. among the black staffers, <clears throat> I would say that. I think they would be frustrated, they would be upset. And I would just, I would say, never say Toby. Never say and Tony. I, never say Toby. Toby, yeah. And, and the white staffers never knew what the hell I was talking about. Yes, sir. And the black folks were like, bro, did you say never say Toby? I'm like, yes, never say Toby. And they, and, and, and they were shocked that I would say that, but I was trying to get them to understand, don't let them break you. Yeah, but it, 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 we're getting to the place where the way we think and feel now is for the benefit of everybody's benefit. There's no enemy. We're together. Uh, otherwise, we're on this 747 airplane, you know, and it's at 30,000 feet and it's about to crash. The people inside the plane are fighting over who's going to be in first class. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. Now it's time to, sometimes reluctantly, to take the, to bury, the, bury the hatchet a little bit and work together for a mutual salvation. And that one act puts us where we belong. You mentioned consciousness. Yes, sir. And I've said for years, black America needs a massive reprogramming. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Deprogramming. Mm -hmm. Deprogramming and then reprogramming, reminding uh, before Fiddler. 
uh, what we came with. We, we were told to get rid of that stuff. Now that very same thing that we're told to get rid of is one of the things that's most necessary for our mutual salvation. Mm -hmm. the, the, the love of God, the, the pride and the, the earth, the water, and one another, men and women, women and men, children. There's this child that the other day is in the papers, 12 years old. Can't speak his voice, don't go higher than that. He kills a 13 year old. And I got proud of it. Walking down the street, I, I got him. That's not us. That's not us. It, it breaks my heart. That's not the boy I remember in front of the, the Maasai line in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Or the kid uh, who's from the uh, Ashanti. That's not them. That's not our children. You, no. you've, never, you've never been shy or afraid of Afrocentric roots. And, and, and it's amazing a lot of our people man, I'm not from there. Uh, and so if you're wearing the clothes and people, man, what are you doing? You're just like, it, it's a costume. Uh, or you, it, it, it's always interesting when I'm having these conversations with, with some individuals. Mm -hmm. And I explain to them all the time, one, if that's your view, you clearly have never used your passport. And two, you've never ha actually had that experience of stepping foot in the motherland and and seeing and feeling and understanding mm -hmm. where we actually come from yeah. and where civilization comes from. Well, I believe very much in God. I had full circle, I tried everything. You know, me and Billy Dee Williams, all we, we did all that stuff, you know, in Harlem and we danced and all that. Friend comes out full circle, God's still in charge. He's over in the corner with his own sword with a laugh and a smile on his face. Well, if he's in charge, we're going to come back to the truth eventually. And uh, there's roles that we played back in Africa before we got slavery. And there's a reason why we uh, controlled the, the planet. We made a lot of mistakes. But we controlled the planet with that system of whatever age, there's something for you to do with the benefit of the whole tribe. Make the bed, gather the beans, we'll get the, 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 the eggs, and the women would cook. It, it would go that way until you become uh, a, a father and then an elder, which is I've become a griot. As long as that's the first order of business is to feed back whatever it takes back to the tribe so everybody listens. If somebody falls out of line, they stick out like a sore thumb. Now they're all sticking out like a sore mm -hmm. thumb. So you can see the difference of what we used to do as opposed to what's happening today. It, it, it breaks my heart to see a, a kid whose voice has not even dropped yet. I shot that. That makes, doesn't make sense. That's not us. That's not us. So for what it's worth, until God calls me, I'm so fortunate to be left alive and it's, it's reasonably healthy to open my mouth like here and everywhere else and say, it's more for us to do. We go back to the basics. And the ones who are listening are shining and sticking out like wonderful sort of thumbs. The athletes, the the actors now, I'm so proud to still be around to witness, even to Will Smith. That is one of the finest actors and gentlemen I know. He deserves to get what he's getting. That was an emotional thing, that's something else. Mm -hmm. But there's so many of them out there. It's, it's, it's great to be sitting here and listen and watch these kids. Taraji Henson, boy, there's some good ones out there. They're so good, man. I'm glad that they get an opportunity to, to grace a, a sta soundstage with them. Where'd they come from? I'm looking young. That's just, I want to put my tobacco back. I'm like, good, yeah, look at you. <laughs> I'm so, there's some, some young brothers and sisters out here. I'm very proud of them. When you, it's interesting uh, you say that because there were, anybody who, who understands the history when Roots was being made. Yes, sir. Any, every black person in Hollywood was trying to be in that. Yeah. And so many people just believed after the fact, because of the ratings and all the attention, that it would just throw open so many doors for black actors. And it didn't happen. It was the season of Roots. It was put on because it had to uh, contract with David uh, Walper and, uh, and Fred, Fred Silverman as realistic as would lose ratings 
for seven days. And then we'd be finished and go back to normal. And the whole thing flipped around. My best friend in Roots was Vic Morrow. We grew up together. We mm. played ball together. He was a great athlete. And he came, I came on the set as Fiddler. And I had just met uh, LeVar. We hung out and, and we fell in love. That was my father and son, big brother. And Vic said, hey, Louie, New York guy. I said, I want to apologize in advance. I said, why? He said, well, you'll see. So I'm standing there as Fiddler. I'm looking at LeVar Burton and Kunta Kinte at the same time. I'm looking at my friend, Vic Morrow, asking Kunta Kinte to say, Toby. And I got mixed emotions because he, he apologized. He knew what was going to happen. Right. So finally, when LeVar finally said, Kunta Kinte said, my name was Toby. It broke my heart. So now he's cut down, and that's the end of the scene. But I kept on going, and they kept the camera going. So I said uh, to him, I said, well, wipe, wiped his hands. I said, what do you, what do you care what uh, that man wants you to say? Kunta Kinte, that's your name. That's who you always be. And I looked up at Vic, and I said, there's going to be another day. You hear me? There's going to be a better day. And kind of Vic said in his acting things, like that. There's the double truth in our, our counterparts. And that's what I pray for on a daily basis. That those men, those Vic Morrows, those James Garners, God rest his soul, mm -hmm. those guys, those Marlon Brandos, the, we're going to put those people together, men and women of all ages, to save this planet for one another. University of Georgia is like that now. Uh, it's, it's getting there, getting there. After traveling around the world, I don't know if you can uh, notice this. People want to fight, and it's also so good for the, with the with the, uh, the the picket signs. Mm -hmm. But if they win that with through the picket signs, that's only half of their success. So it's interesting as you, as you talked about that that the, that season of roots. Yes, sir. And and I've had so many conversations again with. Richard Lawson and Lynn Terman and Bill Duke, yeah. uh, Jack A and others. And, and the reason why I think the stories are important mm -hmm. and why we have to hear them, so people understand that when they turn that television on today, mm -hmm. when they go to the big screen and they see these movies and shows, understand it was a long battle, struggle, oh, yeah. fight to get that, to, to, to get to even just where we are today. Right. Well, we've got other options now. We can just open our mouth and we're on screen. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, flirting with the story of Mary McLeod Bethune. Mm -hmm. so I heard about Mary McLeod Bethune's friendship with Eleanor Roosevelt mm -hmm. and became real tight real quick because her husband was dying of alcoholism. So she came up one day to the White House and he was in the wheelchair and with a blanket. And she grabbed the blanket, pulled a bottle, anyone like this, and she said, it's a true story. Uh, I'm going to give this back to you, but here's first what I want you to do first. Is I want you to integrate the armed forces because we're losing the war. And FDR said, no, they're not capable. He said, I don't care what you say. Call Ike. She calls Ike and says, I want you to integrate the army. He said, those people are not prepared. I don't care. We're going to integrate the war. Tuskegee Airmen, 135th Regiment Armory, Harlem, and five others. And so we're going to put them on the, the world's biggest bigots in the United States Army. It was Patton. I said, give him the Patton business. I'll take care of that. Leave them to me. North Africa, El Qaim. Uh, then they get their, their reputation as, as chess masters. He was a chess master. He was about to annihilate the British in El Qaim in North Africa. There's one last spot for him to go before he says, charge. A young Tuskegee Airman looked out the window and said, wait a minute, that's the such and such maneuver. Called the tank battalion and said, go to that place and don't give it up. As a result of them not giving it up, they beat Field Marshal Rommel, sent him up through Italy, back to Berlin, calling the people to Schwarzes. Where did it get started? the friendship of Mary McLeod Bethune and Eleanor Roosevelt. So when FDR died, Eleanor Roosevelt was responsible for uh, the United Nations, Ralph Bunch, A. Philip Randolph, uh, 
Walter White and others. She was in the middle of all of that. Mm -hmm. Mary McLaughlin. That's the story that we have to tell. Right. And there's so many like it. Because it was supposed to be dangerous if we knew. It's essential that we all know now. Right. I mean, to me, it's dangerous if we don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. More people didn't need to know about you. I've known you for many years. Yes, I remember. I remember you and Al. And you're, you're necessary. <laughs>
just wanted to listen to him and just ask him questions and just. Well, I was, I was adopted. I was 17 years old on Broadway in 1953. Not supposed to be possible. Mm -hmm. Straight in high school. So the people that used to come and bring me sandwiches was Adam Clayton Powell and Hazel Scott. Mm. Um, Paul Robinson, when he was in town, he was so happy to see this young kid in show business. He went to tears. He would laugh. And he'd shake your hand. His fingers were by my elbow. He was a big, right. wonderful, big boy. That's what he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there was uh, Hazel Scott, who was in the play with me, Take a Giant Step. Frederick O'Neill, the first black president of Actors' Equity. Estelle Hemsley. I had the Max, Max Glanville. There was some very nice people used to come and bring me my sandwiches my barbecue from Harlem. And uh, so that was, oh my goodness. Wilt, I was hanging out with Wilt a lot. Uh, I was the kid on the block. Mm -hmm. I was so spoiled, man. I was so spoiled. So my great grandma came up one day and she says, uh, oh, grandma, you came, you made it. And she slapped me. And uh, there's a room full of famous people, right? Right. I said, well, you slapped me. She slapped me again. She says, I taught you how to be respectful for your grandma. And I didn't see that up there. I said, no, no, that's a play. <laughs> that's a play. She said, I don't care. <laughs> And I'm going to come back next week, make sure you don't say it again, right? Wow. Now Paul Rubens is on the floor in stitches. <laughs> You're like, I'm acting. And so, so somebody else is like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of little stories like that. that so. That's hilarious. Yeah. So You're like, why did you slap me? Culture clash. <laughs> Paul Rubens was like a kid. If he saw something like that, he'd, he'd be in tears. He'd laugh so hard. Great man. I, I think... Out of Josephine all, Baker, another one. Out of all of the figures, when I think about activists and even entertainment, mm -hmm. fundamentally, Robeson is, I think, the top of the list of top. completely underrated. Oh, my God. And not fully, I mean, it, 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 for one, just the athletic feats. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, Jack the, Johnson alone. Being a lawyer. and the, I mean, Just, mm -hmm. I mean, but when you just think about central figures of the, of the 20th century, I hate that more people really don't understand. He still has yet to be really honored. Yeah. He's yet to be really, really honored. But there's a man, Kofi, I'll send him to you if you like, and you'll see... You'll see Paul Robeson in front of you. Very mm -hmm. He does a, a one-man show. Mm. And you should probably meet that young man. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, it's nice to be this age, very grateful to be unscathed, uh, broken legs and stuff, you know, and all my had sports injuries. And, but I've been given uh, the opportunity by God, I'm going to call God, to, to be in Israel and Africa and Japan and Australia and Egypt and... South America and Central America and Mexico, Canada, in 80 years. There's no career out there that long. I have nothing to complain about. Mm -hmm. I wake up the next morning, you got me another one? Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. It's good to see you. I've been in the place where I, I was concerned, and it gets you angry, and then finally you take a deep breath, and say, oh, wait a minute. You can't do nothing about it except speak your mind and mm -hmm. get on with the day. But it's a, it's a good time to be alive. When you, um, how do you, uh, let me phrase it this way. What still excites you about either the stage, the small screen, or the big screen? What still makes you just, let's go. New talent. New talent. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my favorite actress is Taraji Henson. And another one is, is uh, the girl that played my daughter in The, the Watchmen. Uh, I can't remember right now what her name is. King. And uh, there's some... Regina Bre King. Regina and others. Writers, the director from, from uh, let's call it Purple, uh, Fantasia. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some people out there that's very exciting. And, and it's in, in all walks of life. Athletes, amazing. That kid uh, from New Orleans. Uh, he's, he's amazing. 
So, so when you do it with these projects, so for you, it's it's being able to share space with this with this I'm, new generation. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and it's a mutual. I don't. Have, we don't have that kind of time. But I tell you, on my cell cell phone, all the thanks and the congratulations, the mutual family over the last couple of years that uh, I've been fortunate to to be around. The respect is there. They like it when we contribute some knowledge to them. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're out there saying, what's next? They're brilliant. But it's, it's, it's the old days when we, had, we created the original gangbanger and the original uh, gangster. Mom was on the phone too long. And the kid was on a, in a high chair with the food, and the food went on the floor. So he came out in the street and said, pay attention, Pat Robin. They're really doing it now. But most of them uh, are still here, that they're salvageable. And they will take their cell phones, eventually, and put it in their back pocket and listen. That's a blessing. And I have to, I'm, I'm very proud to have a semblance of a relationship with those young people. Harry Belafonte. I love that man. I, as well. Yeah. As well. Mr. B. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. When he had convened uh, a meeting of the elders, yes, sir, and it was here in Atlanta, yes, sir, and and he talked about this in his documentary. He says that as he was sitting there, as he was sitting there, listening to all the elders, he said it hit him. I don't need to be in this room. And that's when he then purposely went out and began to go find young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to engage them and talk to them. Yes, sir. Because uh, he said the solutions for the future are not going to be solved in the room with elders. He says we got to be able to be Touch. interacting with young. Yes sir. yes, sir. There's so many stories to tell you. We, we need a lot of time to do that. My, my lifetime friend with Floyd Patterson, uh, he, he was the El, El Diablos, Bedford Stop, Stingy Brim Hats, Satin Jackets, and I, I had uh, my cousins, the El, El something, El Quintos. And I, I, I came and went so far to the wrong neighborhood. And the gang had me up against the wall. And somebody said, get out of the way. The man took a zip gun, about this big, with a big fat rubber band, and put it in my, between my eyes like this. And we looked eye to eye. They pulled the trigger, and the rubber band broke. Now, the Guinness Book of Records does not have the fastest 10 blocks in history. I still hold that record. <laughs> <laughs> you know who that man was? Oh, Floyd Patterson. Wow. Before he went to the Woodward School. And we became close. Yeah, we became close after that? Yes. I told him he remembers me, and I remember him. Man. Yeah, that's a story. Yeah. Yeah, that is a story. Yeah, he almost killed me. But the rubber band broke. That's divine intervention. Absolutely. Yeah, we used to run the Greenwood Lake before the championships. Quite a man. Now, how did y'all go from that to friends? Because we, we looked at each other and said, I don't remember you. He said, yeah, you remember me. I remember you. Why would you remember me? And I told him, he said, yeah, that was me. Him and his brother ran the El Diablos. His brother died in Sing Sing. Mm. And he went to Whitwick School for Boys. And you like, thank God that rubber band. Tell broke. me, tell, yes, sir. With thick red red rubber bands and things said, oing, 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 oing. and my butt said, oing, oing, oing. <laughs> I'm Brooklyn. I come from there, from that old area. It's amazing. The life is really nice. I'm very great, grateful. When you think about moments like that, mm -hmm. um, and it happens to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it, it's always interesting to me when folks say, well, it, it, it just happened. I'm like, no, 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 no. That was a message. God knows what you were destined for. Yes, sir. And um, what was sad to me is when, um, when I see, especially when I see a story of another young brother, young rapper, shot and killed, a brother's at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffle House. Yeah. Um, take off, cats are sitting here playing a dice game, and it just and when it happens, the, for me, what 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 comes up is, or even, you know, the DJ Twitch mm -hmm. takes his life at forty, 
Mm. I always think about, I always think about what, what the world miss, miss, misses when, when these lives are, are taken so young. And so when I hear that story, mm. I mean, all the things that happen after that yeah. well, you, would have you, never transpired. You pray on it very hard. And I think their messages, God is giving us messages hard and soft. So sometimes we need to hear a hard message to get our attention and blink our eyes to do something about it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very grateful to still be alive, to open my mouth, just to, to, to do that. Every now and then I can't get up in the morning. I'm 86, you know. But as soon as I can, I'm up, you know. I've got some nice people working with me and for me. To help me do that. So you just said, you said open your mouth. And the thing that, I say this all the time to, to journalists or, mm. or even media personalities. I tell them, you need to respect this microphone. Yes, sir. And I said, what I mean by respect it, you, don't, you need to understand the power of it, how literally what you say mm. could alter someone's thinking, could change their mind, yeah. could change the direction of their lives. I had a, when I ran Tom Joner's site, blackamericaweb.com, mm -hmm. um, I was the founding editor. And we didn't have a praise and worship channel. Mm. And I said, well, you can't have a black website and you have a praise and worship channel. Mm -hmm. So I created it. And... I wrote a column one day, and I literally cannot even remember what it was. Mm -hmm. And a woman sent me an email. A woman sent me an email. And she said, you know, I, li I listen to Tom's show, and I hear this every day. She, she said, I, I listen to his show, and I, I keep hearing him talk about this website every day. Gotcha. And she said, and I never went to the website. But today, I decided to go to the website. And she said, and then I went to this channel, and then I saw what you wrote, and I read what you wrote. <clears throat> she said, I want you to understand something. She said, I had already planned my suicide. She said, I had already, um, I had already planned it. I, I knew when. I knew how. And I was simply waiting for that day. She said, yet I read what you wrote. And now I understand that there's a purpose for my life. Mm. Now, when I told that story, I was like, oh, my God, that's an amazing. I said, I said, no, I said, let me flip it. I said, what you need to understand is if God told me to write it and I never wrote it, that's she a sin. would have never read it. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, so the piece for us is when we have to say something to somebody, I said, say it because you do not know who is being sent to hear it. Absolutely. I, I, I find here in Georgia, what I say to you sometimes doesn't fall right on, on black or white ears. Right. Because they want things to stay as they are and slowly uh, uh, grow. But if they want to stop me by killing me or shutting me down, they're shutting down somebody who's going to save their life tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. That old, I'm better than you are, is, doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm Faraji Muhammad, live from LA. And this is The Culture. The Culture is a two-way conversation. You and me, we talk about the stories, politics, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. So join our community every day at 3 p.m. Eastern and let your voice be heard. Hey, we're all in this together, so let's talk about it and see what kind of trouble we can get into. It's The Culture, weekdays at 3, only on the Black Star Network. The 
the media is the second most powerful medium in the world. Mm -hmm. You see a coup anywhere in the world is the guns, is the military first, media is always second. Yes, sir. So what do you do, what I do is so powerful because we literally, what we do goes around the world. Absolutely, now, especially now. And people are forming mm -hmm. opinions and perspectives based upon what they see. So that movie, yeah. that, that uh, radio project, mm -hmm. uh, that broadcast, I mean, we literally People could change minds. That's what happened. And that's why I say, folk, don't mm -hmm. take lightly mm -hmm. that power that you have. Yes, and some, some of it's new. Yes, some of it's new. They had the, 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 the one television. You must have been a teenager uh, when television was in New York City. You, you get the Goodwill and, and the East Side, West Side. And that's where Sicily and all those people came mm -hmm. from. So I did a thing called the nurses. And I, said, I played a juvenile delinquent. They just shot in the stomach. And uh, at the end, I'm running from the cops, and my, the, the stitches break. And I die. They put it away. I get my first job in Kenya, in Tanzania. And uh, it's the first year of, of national television in Kenya and Tanzania. So I get off the plane in Nairobi, and some young Africans go, hey! So I get out, and I get in the car and go to the Hilton. By the time I get to the Hilton, the traffic has stopped. This young man says, can you do me a favor? I said, yeah. He says, open your shirt. So I went up the shirt. How did you do that, sir? And I do what? How did you come back to life? That's early television. Yeah. Wow. That's the story. We had Jomo Kenyatta's president, his wife, did the same. How did you do that? They didn't know about acting. They right. know now. So like a great-grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some stories that does in my book. But that's the power, and, and that's why, you know, it's, 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 it's like, no, understand that even if it's a movie and it's fiction, mm -hmm. the words that you speak, the role that you play, Someone is watching. Yes, it is. That's new for me. And someone is paying yeah. attention. Yeah. And literally, one scene mm. could just completely yeah. alter someone's view. Yeah, because I was, I've been told across the South, this was supposed to be dangerous down here. I mean, some of the guys, some of the cops, I said, you helped raise me an officer or gentleman. I had a sergeant just like you. And then he said, what has changed my life? He just comes to my house sometimes. And uh, under other circumstances, he'd be on the other side of the street. Maybe his father was, but uh, not me and him. When, when you, speaking of that, when you were doing that movie, were you thinking about in an understanding the, the racial implications of this hardcore, stern, black officer. The officer gentleman? Yeah. And, and, and how mm. folk would react to it. Well, no, because the officer gentleman, I was, gonna, I was getting a part. There's a break for me. They, they fired a, a, a white actor and paid him off because somebody had done some research and say 90% of the DIs teaching the, the, the naval officers to be pilots are black. So initially, so initially, that was a white actor? Initially, it was a white actor. I can't remember his name, but it, <clears throat> I, I, I think I can remember. And, and it was a, 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 a tribute to Richard Gere. He was Mr. Goodbar. He was the new movie star. So he was ready to do that and be the lead and beat up the Marine and, and win the girl and all that stuff. And the Marines showed up with me after six weeks of rehearsal of, 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 of I became, I was a DI when I showed up. It was my shot, you know? The DI said, oh, no, that's not what we do. So slowly as we did it on a daily basis, the Marines let them say what's real. How do you make a man out of a man? I don't care what color you are, what religion, you gotta listen to these rules. I'm your DI. Now for you, yes. what was it like to transform into that? Oh, it was, in, in a way, it was a secret pleasure <laughs> because I never got a chance to do it in the streets of Los Angeles. 
and I got legally ability, the ability to tell the movie star to get down and give me 50. I want the DOR. So that whatever is it was in my system, I was able to legally, legally do it for Taylor Hackley. So sort of like when, when Jamie Foxx played in Django Unchained. Yes, sir. When, so, so for you, it was like, okay, all of this that black folk yeah. been carrying. The director said, let him have I'm, it. I'm about to take it out on Richard Yow. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> did did, did he understand that? Great professional actor, because he went for it. That's why it's such a good movie. So you took all of that, our history, and, and subjugation, and having to yeah. bow down, and- They and, should have the Oscar, the Marines. They would not let us lie about them in that movie. They tried to fight for, for a week that Richard would win the fight. No. And they said, that don't happen in real life? No, 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 no. That, that should be their Oscar. Because they pushed me right through, representing them. So I said, we just had a birthday a couple months ago, the Marine's birthday. I'm a Marine. Do Marines still yes, sir. come up to you? Yes, sir. And every foreign country has got an embassy, and it's manned by the Marines. So I'm an honorary Marine, and I represent the Montfort Point Marines. Uh -huh. you know, so it's it's very good feeling, very secure feeling, very so, secure. So many actors want that Academy Award. Mm -hmm. Did it mean that much to you? Was it validation, or or for you did you say, I don't need the award to validate me? Well, I, I needed validation. Oh, even today, I, I sink into that low self-esteem. I'm old now, you know, I forget my lines and stuff. And I see, I, in my mind, I see the wood the scissor. That's it. That's me. Right. But uh, I'm just very grateful. I'm grateful. I'm still there. I did uh, not as good a job as I thought I would do on The Color Purple. I played that and, and others. I forgot my lines. And, but it's there. It's still there. I was born with it. Whenever I ask musicians or actors this question, typically it's something that we don't, wouldn't associate as their favorite. Um, some people hate when I have to ask this. When I ask this question, like, oh, it's like picking your favorite child. So I ask it this way: What role have you relished the most? Just. It just, you just, even thinking about it now, it makes you just feel great when you think about that role. Enemy mind. Five and a half of makeup. Five and a half hours of makeup. Look like a lizard. Come from another planet. The most difficult job I've ever had to do. Storyline, those enemies become friends, lifetime friends, and he has a baby and the philosophy of the story between Dennis Quaid's character and my character became two lifetime brothers. And uh, I had six months in Germany. That's that amazing stuff. Everybody turned it down because it's so hard. Mm. You know, Dennis, 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 uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman wants to play it, but it's too hard. I said, yeah, hand it here. I went there to Munich and ate, ate the food, the sauerbrot, and, and uh, Got a lot of sleep and got in good shape. And the philosophy of that movie, if you see it, Galip defined, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. We were chatting before the camera's rolling, and we were talking about Glenn Turman. Oh, yeah. And my baby brother. The folks, just the cast and the raising in the sun. Mm hmm. Mm. Um, when you think back and reflect on. Sir Sidney. Oh, yes, sir. What comes to mind? Love, respect, honor, role model, best friend, uh, benevolent, brilliant, uh, smooth, him and Harry. And I, I fought him and Harry and Sammy for a while. Another, another man by the name of Leon Bibb, mm -hmm. Roscoe Lee Brown. I followed them around faithfully, because they had something to offer. Maya, Cicely was my leading lady. She was a lot of leading ladies. And an actress by the name of Beverly Todd. Mm -hmm. 
that society. She's still around. The world's mm -hmm. still around. Something was very rich about those people. I stuck, stuck with them as much as possible. The thing to me with Portier, mm -hmm. um, just the word presence, it was, it, was, it, was, it was just always just interesting. In the few times I was in a room, just to watch how others would approach him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, and it, it really was. Royalty. It, that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it was. And he did it for himself. So upon Ruth listening to radio and television, learning how to get rid of that accent, and he, he did it for himself. He did it. And that's to be respected. I miss him terribly. But right behind him was me, following along with him. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me not to act like him. He was so good. Really? He was that good, yeah. Another one that I talk about that not enough people talk about is Woody Strode. Mm. Remember Woody Strode at all? Mm -mm. Remember a film called uh, Sergeant Rutledge? Woody Strode. Woody Strode, S-T-R-O-D-E. Um, you come to my house, I show you a picture, painting of me and him, and a picture I did called Gathering of Old Men. Ernest Gaines did it. The first thing he did was Jane Pittman, mm -hmm. Sisley. Second one was Gathering of Old Men. Mm -hmm. Now, Woody Strode went to UCLA, All-American. Um, he was all-star football player, track star, and he was nominated for an Academy Award in a thing called Sergeant Rutledge. And um, then he was sent to Italy, where he could do some work. So he did Dimitris and the Gladiators with, with uh, Kirk Douglas. And he stayed there and did a lot of movies. So look him up. He was my hero. Woody Stroll. Yeah, he's, uh, there's some great ones out there, man. Some of them still alive. Great ones. When um, you were talking about Glenn Turman and uh, y'all's relationship. Yeah. Um, the thing that, uh, when, I last talk, when I last talked to him, uh, is that um, I still crack up that, that Glenn. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Glenn, how are you from Harlem? And you swear he, 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 he a Southern cowboy, um, you know. And, and, and so, I, so I get a kick out of that. And he said that his his great his greatest dreams. I said, what's that one thing you want to do? And he said, a real true black western. Who? So I ask you, is there something that you have always wanted to do, but you have yet to do? And what is that? Loaded question. The character that I always wanted to play has been played. I don't think it was good enough, but it's still there. The Bass Reeves stories. Bass Reeves was the most successful marshal in the history of the West. Mm -hmm. And always got his man except for one. I've got a, a photograph of him in my, my, in my office. There's some other stories. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a, a man by the name of Colonel Hubert, the Black Eagle Julian. You know that name at all? Mm -mm. Well, you know... C Colonel Hubert? Hubert Fauntleroy Julian. He was the Black Eagle. Mm. So now he, he was the Black Star, shipping lines. Right. So how Marcus Garvey got his black people out of Harlem to go to Jamaica first before they, they went to Liberia. Mm -hmm. They used the Black Star lines. It was owned by Colonel Julian. Mm -hmm. Colonel Julian had, had a little biplane, and, and the Red Baron called him a Schwarzer. And he challenged the, the man in the, in the middle of the English Channel and sent him home. <laughs> and so he was one of those people. They've taken him out of the history books of Marcus Garvey. If it wasn't for him, Marcus Garvey couldn't have gotten to Liberia. Mm. It was his stuff. He supplied all the Cause weapons. Because most people, when they, when they, when they, yeah. if they do, first of all, if anybody talks about Marcus Garvey. Yes. It's, it's, even if they talk about that and they mention the Black Star Cruise Line. Yes. That's, that's I, Colonel Julian. Like literally. Yeah. That name never comes up. They take it out. I want to put it back. It's a very special Jamaican, both of them Jamaican. <laughs>
too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. history you um, too yeah it, it's you know all of those stories are so important yes sir. Uh, just to understand how things happened and and how and 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 you know the intersection and and how things how, how things were connected mm-hmm. and you know I, i've given speeches and i i, I wouldn't i mentioned someone i mentioned someone's name people like oh my god i never heard that yeah and and it shows you how so much of our history is just completely untold. I mean, there, there, school, are, yeah. there are just troves of names and stories that are worth telling. Oh, yeah. Whether documentaries, whether movies, or whatever. There's a, this family, it's called the Jackson family, I think, outside of Tulsa, when they bombed Tulsa. That's right. They were missed because they were not in Tulsa, just on the outskirts. Mm, they weren't in Greenwood. They weren't in Greenwood, wow. right outside. And they still have the property. I'm trying to get that done. So I don't want to ask anybody else. I want to ask us. We have to have this network so that these young people know how prolific the history yeah. is. Good well, and bad. Well, that's why, so it's just so, just so you know, um, I was working with some folks and we were, we hired these marketers to come up with a name for my for my network, and, um, and I, I expressly told them, "Don't come back to me with an African name." Here's why: I said, "I don't want to have to have to explain the name of the network while I'm trying to explain to you what the network is." Yes, I hear you. That's why I did that. That's a d- distraction. So it wasn't. It wasn't like mm-hmm. okay. I'm just mm-hmm. okay. I don't. I don't want an African name. Mm-hmm. I said, but I said I got finite time to explain the network. Mm-hmm. I can't try to be trying to explain the name okay. and be explaining the network. You. Yeah. So they came back with these names. I'm like, I told you I don't do this. <laughs> and so one of my guys, he's like, Look, baby, we got to choose a name. Now I just come come back from Ghana from the year of return, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, I had I did I took a photo um, above the. Um, Black Star Gate, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and I was sitting there, and I was and it just again I had spent probably ten grand with his marketing group, and came up with a name literally that quick, and the reason I saw my OTT network is called Black Star Network. Gotcha. And the reason and the reason because so why did Garvey want to do that? Because he wanted to connect the African diaspora. Yes, sir. And so my whole deal was it's the same thing with with the network. Mm. And, and what I tell people is what literally what you just said, because mm-hmm. uh, people come in after TV one and like, oh man, I wish you go back to CNN. I wish you had a show on MSNBC. And I said, I'm not interested in asking someone else for permission to tell our story. I agree. And it's, I said, it's not revolutionary. No, it's necessary. I said I want to be able yeah. to say yes, no, yeah. and being able to own the cameras and being able to. Say no, we're going to go here. Right. So, yeah, we're going to go to Liberia for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to go. We're going to go That's here. That's exciting. We're going to go. We, we spent six days in Tulsa covering the gotcha. hundredth anniversary of the uh, of the race massacre. Mm-hmm. And to me, that that that's really it. It's it's having the freedom mm-hmm. to not ask somebody else for, for permission. permission. For permission. Because we got so yeah. many stories. Oh, so many stories. So many stories. Uh, so many. We can talk for hours on those stories. I've done research on all my career. That's close to 70 years. 
all of them were turned down except here recently. Mm -hmm. But uh, now's the time. Because he's got universities, he's got audiences. Yeah. It's programs like this. It's awesome. And the thing, the key is the gatekeepers no longer control access. You know, it's, it's a different ball game. And that's, that's why I game. love to see Nali. I love to see what's happening in Nigeria. Yeah, Nali to see, was tough last time. Yeah. You know, I just love to see how African nations and how folks in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. uh, how young filmmakers mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the United States who li are, 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 are taking this phone mm -hmm. and creating, you it's know, art. Yeah. Uh, full, you know, full, full scale uh, movies. And, and that's, that's the thing that I, I tell people, young and old. People come up to me and they say, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, but, but I can't afford all of this. And I say, listen. That's gotten so sophisticated. I said, this, yeah. m this right here, that's, I said, start here. Mm -hmm. I said, do not let the inability to purchase all of this mm -hmm. keep you from telling the story. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've enjoyed this, by the way. Thank well, you. Well, you know, we, we've been waiting for a long time we've to do been, it. Yeah, we've been, yeah, but we've gone through changes. Also. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now is the time. Absolutely, absolutely. Now is the uh, time. Your book. Yes, sir. You call it An Actor and a Gentleman. Mm -hmm. um, I always ask anyone who writes a book this, even, if, even when they wrote it, was there a wow moment? So even when you were writing and researching and remembering, <clears throat> what was that moment where you went, wow? Oh, yeah. I could count them, but the biggest, if you have time. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't work in... We got time. I, okay. own, I own it. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go to South Africa until Mandela was going to come out of prison. Right. I've been invited. I did a good man in Africa, you know. But the first movie produced independently after Mandela was coming out of prison was a thing called The, 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 the Reason. And uh, it's, it's kind of a throwback of the Truth Commission. So... I moved to, to uh, South Africa, and I'm, I'm having a good hot and cold places, people watching over corners and stuff, but I'm looking around. I learned to meet the uh, Mandela's and, uh, and the, the godfather of the uh, ANC, uh, the Tambo family. Mm -hmm. And in the Tambo family was the heir apparent after Mandela would retire. It was Chris, H-A-N-I, Hani. Mm -hmm. and was dating his niece, an albino, I, I'd still be there. She'd, she'd have me by the throat. She was so, so pretty. Oh, God. I was, I was moving in. I was moving in. She, uh, she, uh, she, she took your heart, huh? Oh, gosh. The whole culture. The whole culture. So now, Chris Hining was, uh, and then they celebrated his, his success at this football stadium. And there was a man behind him saying, stop firing. They were shooting guns. And his name was Chris Hining. He was in the government. One morning, a white woman, and a man shot Chris Hani in the chest seven times. So when you do that, and here in Georgia, you go to this flower man, and you bring the flowers to the to the mom, the mom, you know, to the wife. That's all I was thinking about. My driver, he's a former football player with Jerry Curl, and we got on the freeway, went to the Honey household, and when we look up, we're surrounded. On the left is all the white guys with their tanks. And on the right side is all the young blacks with their little swords and stuff. We can't back up. Can't go forward. The heart goes boom, the boom. That's it. You're like, what did I walk into? What did into? I walk into, right? So I took a deep breath, got the flowers out, and started walking toward the house. And they got out the way. Heart's going boom. That's all I can hear was boom, the boom, boom. And things on the radio, walkie talkie. So finally I got there knocking on the door. My friend Dolly Tambo, you know that name, Dolly Tambo? Mm -hmm. He, uh, that's part of that family. He opened up, grabbed me and says, get in here. I said, what happened? He says, you, you're crazy. You just walked into the, the, the mouth of, of the devil. They're gonna, they're, they're, you not, may not live. I mean, he was very upset. So while I'm here, can I give this flowers to, to the missus? And I took her, she looked at me and I was like, I was nuts. Three or four hours later, Oliver Tambo, the godfather of the ANC, mm -hmm. Adelaide, his wife, 
She said, I think I'm going to try and see if I can get you back to the hotel. So she goes out and she speaks, oh, three hours. And uh, she cried, spoke in three or four different languages. She was on the ground, ah, whatever she was saying. And she came back exhausted, soaking wet. She says, I think maybe you can try it now. So <laughs> my man, Jerry Curl's going. <laughs> The football player, yeah, Jerry he's, gone, yeah, he's gone, he's gone. So now we get in the car and we're followed all the way, th- halfway to this Satin, Satin Sun, name of the hotel. And we got there. I can take a deep breath. That's a wow. Yeah. That's a wow. Coming back to do a good man in Africa, the white people, I'm the first ones off the plane. I said, oh, they, they haven't forgotten. So he grabs me and tells me that he was one of the soldiers. His name was Hilgar, I think his name was, from, from, from New Zealand. And uh, he took me off the plane first. And uh, after that, he said, uh, I want to tell you a story. He was in one of those tanks. Mm. And his commander said, put that man in your horse crosshairs. So that's one of the stuff I heard from the walkie-talkie. And all of a sudden, I came close, and I said, oh, no, no, wait a minute. That's Lou Gossett Jr., a white Dutchman. So the life was saved because of the movies. Wow. Otherwise, I'd be dead. And that's two times. And more than what? More you, than that. Wow. Yeah, that's a wow. Yeah. A white Dutchman yeah. gets the order Put that black man in your cr- in crosshairs. In your crosshairs. And he does. It he goes, was assigned when he came back as my buddy. That's Lou Jr. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, thank, became, he became my bodyguard. Thank God for the big screen. Tell me something. There you go. There you go. That is a, that's yeah. A that's, that, that's a wild moment. Yeah. I, I, I want to go back. I want to go the back. The only thing I would regret was that Zulu girl. See, that's what I was going to go back. Because it was... <laughs> What is it? When you said it, I was just—I was like, you know what? What he thinks on this? What is it about a woman that captivates a man? That I, don't, I don't want to figure it out. I just want to be happy it's there. I mean, just, just. Yeah. I mean, the idea of you wake up thinking about them. Mm-hmm. You think about them all day. Yeah. You go to sleep. You go to sleep. You want to see their face. It—it—it well, it, it, it is. It's, it's just a fascinating... It's, it's old. It's, it's old as people. Because back in Africa, there's, there's no husbands and wives. There's tribes. And the job to do for the main benefit of the whole. So it's a free feeling. Yeah. See, I was, ha- I, was, uh, so I was having a conversation the other day with a friend of mine. And we were talking about this. And he said, there's a difference between Loving someone, Mm -hmm. being in love with someone, Mm -hmm. and desiring someone. Yeah. Sometimes I think what you huh? Sometimes all three come together. I think what sounds like what you describe it as Zulu woman, all 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 three converged. Yeah, almost two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. So so she now married to somebody else with a silver mine. So she's all right. She's doing Bridget Mutsepe. But she just uh, she, she, she took me took me right off the ground. You know, that was it. You know. Bad mistake. I should have stayed there and fought for her. <laughs> I mean, you had the Dutch but, bodyguard. But I, have, I have no complaints though, man. Everything's okay. It's okay. I'm an old man now. I can reflect and be very grateful. Very grateful. We have some contemporaries out there, the the Dion's, and the, I'm okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay. Has it, was it hard, I've, I've, other people, other artists have said this to me, that it is very difficult for people who they love, would be their family or a partner, to understand that their craft is actually their most important love. Well, it's a tough one. That's not racial at all. That's, Has that been the case for you, where your craft is the, that's 
that's just, that's your, your first marriage, your first love. Once you start getting successful in it and you study the things that you have to go through in order to loosen your instrument to play those parts to get hired again and be successful globally, first locally and then globally, it's your first marriage. So how do you, how do you, how do you, de how do you deal with that? How do you deal with... You pray that the, the who you're with understands. They take them with you sometimes when they light the lights and stuff, you know. But, but how do you also even deal with it when, and again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm converging these two forces. When you're with someone, mm -hmm. you're, you have a partner, you're married to someone, mm -hmm. and then you have this love, and then you encounter someone else. Oh, it's a tough who, it happens. Yeah. who takes your breath away. Yeah. Because, the, 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 and that's the thing that I think, a lot, again, when, 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 when that thing is what mm. you love, and it's, and it's not that, it's not, to me, it's not even that you crave the attention. No. But it's just that when you know that this is what I was put here for, it, it, it's hard for, it's, someone has to understand that. That look, this, this is one. my thing. That's not Rachel at all. It's not Rachel at all. It's uh, a dynamic. It's tough. Male, male, female, female, male. Female, female, male, male. And there were many times that you had to pick? When you had to make clear? You, yeah, you have to be clear. Honor your, 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 your reason why you're, why you're traveling, what you have to do in front of your audience. Uh, uh, so it's more than doing the movie. You have to push it. You have to be present. You have to be charming. And every now and then God steps in there with his little devilish arrow. And uh, that's what happens. That's what happens with uh, some of them, you know. That's what happened probably with uh, one of the greatest athletes, uh, O.J. and, uh, and uh, the man with the bad leg, Hollywood, Dion. Mm -hmm. Those are my heroes, you know. Walt Frazier. Uh, some great ones out there. <laughs>. So I'm, I'm at the Jeffrey Osborne Golf Tournament, <clears throat> and it gets rained out. Massive storm comes through. So we're sitting at the table, sitting around talking, and so I'm sitting here, and Ahmad Rashad is sitting here, and Eddie Levert is sitting here, mm -hmm. and Barry Bonds is sitting here, wow. and Sugar Le Ray Leonard is sitting right here. And we're having this discussion about greatness. Mm. Because, because I brought up something Eddie's singing, and I brought up, and he was talking about, man, you the smartest guy on television. And so, so we're, and he's asking me questions, and then we're talking, Ahmad is talking about what it requires to be a great wide receiver, and, and Barry is talking about what it means to be a, a, a great baseball player. And then Sugar Ray Leonard is talking about what it means to be a great boxer, and, and he says something, he says, man, you've been a great boxer. I was like, are you out your mind? He said, no, 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 no. He said, last night we were on stage and I saw you dancing. He said, all I could do is look at your feet. He said, it was right. your, he was like, it's your footwork. Yeah. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, no, your footwork. He said, I thought you were all that twisted turn. Are you going to fall down? I said, first of all, to be a boxer, you got to take a punch. I ain't let nobody hit me. I said, footwork is great. But it was just this fascinating discussion we had. Oh, my God, I wish a camera was rolling. And it was just a whole discussion about greatness. Mm -hmm. Um... Have you had those conversations with peers or people you respect where, where, where you wanted to just, no, I need to know 
what does it require to be great, to become a legend, become an icon? And I'm having the slightest idea. It's good, good fortune. Blessed by God. Uh, you look at it, reflect, you reflect on it, and it's uh, almost like bingo. Mm. You prepare for it. The best you can do to prepare for it, and each day you get better and better. Never wanted to quit? Did you yeah, ever? quite a few times, yeah. We're not getting How better. close did you come? I wanted to, uh, there was a time when I had to be, choose between basketball and sports early on, baseball and sports, and then uh, I got work. And every time I would threaten to quit, I'd get a job. So I was making somebody else some money, so I didn't want that to happen, I guess. But I've gotten the good fortune of bringing my children, who are still upset, but they came with me through nine and ten different universities and countries. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. It's a you tough say one. still upset? They're still upset. They don't have a check. It's, and I think father and son or father and daughter is much more quality than that. It's, it's the hands-on relationship, the way it would be back in the, in the days of the tribes. Any regrets? No. no, no I don't, I'd don't. question God if I did that. Yeah, this is one great big sandwich. You know, there's some things, uh, if you should do that, then you can't live today. One role that I do, and I have a DVD, Satchel Page. Oh, boy, that was fun. That was fun in Mississippi. Yeah. He was there when we started. Really? Yeah. He was there. Wow. He traveled in the suitcase, two suitcases. His dishes, all stuff is in one, in two suitcases. Mm -hmm. Beverly Todd was my wife, my wife. Again, Paige, another one of those, people talk about Jackie Robinson, they talk about, mm -hmm. uh, but Paige was just unbelievable. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he should have been the first. Black, but he was 60 years old at the time. Great athlete, though. Smart. Josh Gibson. Um, the second baseman. Wee Willie from the Black Leagues. I yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, the, 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 the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. he, just died, he died last year. Great, great performances. Great people. Josh you, Gibson, all of them. You, you, you cross paths with so many people. Yes, sir. Yeah. Very grateful. Who would you say, and granted, you got lots of choices. That was just absolutely fascinating. Anwar Sadat. I had to play him. Mm -hmm. There's very little uh, look on him on films for him speaking. So I was invited. He collected black artists, mm. Roots, the whole private library. Which is how I got to play his part by his wife, Jihan. Fascinating man. He was more black than any of them because he's a Nubian. Yes, yes. And uh, his feelings were very deep. Oh, I remember vividly. Yeah. I was in the eighth grade. Was assassinated. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember vividly. that moment when he decided to go to Israel and get off the plane and go to Israel. How deep that decision had to be. Yeah, I remember the movie. Remember me watching you in the movie. That was yeah. Yeah, I was always fascinated by the Sadat, because again, you, my dad watched news all the time. And so you're always watching news and you're like, who was who this black man? Yeah, he was a great man, great man, great man. The two of them, Ben Gurion and Sadat, and Golda Meir, that whole area. It's a very historical area that God has seen fit for me to participate as, as, as uh, Sadat as a uh, Egyptian uh, culture, I suppose the other culture of Africa, going there after the Six Day War with Tony Curtis on that way, going back for Iron Eagle one and two, another way. So I can go there now, I don't know, but last time I went, I didn't even need a, a passport. And they're killing one another. <laughs> so it's something about God's influence mm -hmm. on us that we have to take advantage of. Favorite African nation? Ghana. Why? Um, I don't know. I like this style. I like this style. Then, then Ghana, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, 
that whole section. If you come to places like in Georgia and Florida and South and North Carolina, you see very people who look like they come from the same family, mm -hmm. which means that they got a whole tribe. They all came off the boat and sold in one area. And everybody looks like cousins. Right. So they're all the same tribe. That has the good, good, good answer. And then the, 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 the one that was not expected is if you have the whole tribe put together, watch out, they're going to come back together <laughs> and do their old roots and stuff. And that's happening. 100 years from now, as going to be a kid, mm -hmm. it's going to be clicking through, and they're going to come, going to come past movies. There might be a bookstore coming past this book, mm -hmm. and they might go, Luke Cossett Jr. Mm -hmm. They might be Googling, they might be looking it up, and they're going to see this long history. They're going to see these long career. What would you want that kid a hundred years from now to know who Lou Gossett Jr. was? I want them to get it out of the book. And out of the book a hundred years from now would be a, a thumbprint button push. So you can learn about me or Sydney or Harry by going <coughs> uh, We need to do that before we get out of the street from our parents and our grandparents. We have to know who one another is. We all have the same basic family rules, I believe. Uh, we have to honor and obey and respect. Uh, we have to be more like the tribe that forced the man to make us slaves. We had the keys to the kingdom. We had the uh, rule over Russia, the first ones really in America. And, but that's over. We made our mistakes too. We need that respect back. We, first, we have to give it to ourselves. So that keeps that age, that's, that elder relationship, which is what I'm doing, for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. 100 years from now, it's going to be easier. Go. So I, that's what I think. I'm not going to be here 100 years from now. But you never know what God does. It's going to be easier, I think, in the not too distant future for the. For us to talk about Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte and Ruby Dee and Paul Robeson. It's not just a, a personal memory. They helped me a great deal. But the, the kids behind me and behind the other kids, it's going to be easier. I just want their curiosity to be strong as mine mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. You know who they are. People you might not know. You know, there's so many, so many, so many. Roxy Roca. Maya Angelou, uh, Raymond St. Jacques, Charles Gordon, uh, some great ones out there. Uh, these, these kids don't know who they are. Last question for you. <clears throat> <clears throat> we began you talking about God waking you up every day. And when you are doing something, when you are, whether it's with your foundation, whether it's when you're speaking, whether it's a podcast, whether it's when you're acting, is it your great grandmother or is it someone else who is still there who you want to, I don't, I don't, I want, I don't want to say impress. Um, but that when you do something, when you work, mm -hmm. you are, you're thinking of this person and thanking them for what they put in you. Who is that? My mother, my great-grandmother, um, and God. But the elders fed me. Uh, Mary McCloud's Bethune's uh, counterpart was in the First Baptist Church was Madame C.K. Chappell. They dress the same. Uh, the aunts, uh, the, the women, the churches, the black church was very powerful. Those women had, the ones got the schools, uh, and they smart, smarter than they, they were expected. They might, some of them might have been maids, but they sure picked up the right things mm -hmm. and gave it to us. So it's a, I'll never forget those women, some of those men, those elders, mm -hmm. 
that I have them to uh, thank on a daily basis. Them and God. That's this is gravy time, man. Mm -hmm. This is gravy time. This is the longest existing career of anybody. Starting in 53, I'm amazed. That's God's work. And me obeying, as, as my great grandma would say, hard head makes a soft behind. You know, that's, uh, I'm very grateful. I'm gra gra grateful that you offered to talk with me this long. It's, I'm very blessed. So thank you for that. Well, I've been wanting to do it, and I appreciate that we finally got a chance to do it. I look forward to it. Next time you come to my house, I eat. Let's do it. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Bring, bring those hungry brothers with you. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> look, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right.